They're being destroyed weekly by ignorance. You find somebody who's putting in um, a solar farm, the likelihood is that that place was left barren because there were ceremonial stones there. And so they're not going to see them, and, they're just, and the archaeologists aren't going to see them, and they're just going to blast right on through them. So what we're looking to do is, with our memorandums of understanding, is to develop an understanding with a town like Wendell, because I just got a call from the Wendell Planning Board because the Wendell Historic Commission has an MOU with our tribes. They feel now duty bound to contact our tribes and say, we want to find out what's going on here. And now they're trying to get their town attorney to tell this when this um, solar farm developer that you have to bring the tribes in and they have to make a survey because we have agreed with them to protect the ceremonial stones that are within our jurisdiction. That's major. We are in a position where we can now reach out to our partners in the towns and say, protect this and we will help bring some revenue to your town. You protect, we will back you up. At the federal level, we can protect these places. At the local level, we cannot. Only you can protect what's in your jurisdiction. And that's where we are, and we're, we're trying to operate smarter rather than harder. Mm -hmm. We should not have to fight the descendants of the colonists. We should by now be able to partner with them mm -hmm. to protect what is ancient for us. And with many of them, we're finding out, oh, You've got some Indian ancestry too, huh? Oh, that's what. We had a man over in, in Goshen, Massachusetts. At the end, he, he spoke up in a, in a presentation. I did 21 town tour with this presentation that you're seeing. And he was in one of those towns, and he came forward and he spoke up at the end of the session. And then he called me, and he said, there's some logging that's going to go on, and I think that there, it's in an area where they're going to destroy a lot of ceremonial stones. He said, I was asked to log there 20 years ago, and what I felt, I could not do any logging. And he said, can you come up here? What? And I just had to acknowledge, well, look, why did you go on that 21 town tour if you didn't expect people to call you? <laughs> he's calling you, he's saying, help, mm -hmm. help us, mm -hmm. help us help you. Mm -hmm. That was Friday, Monday, I was up there. Mm -hmm. I walked the ceremonial stones. I found stuff that blew my mind. I called the landholder and I said, I understand that your guys are up here logging. And what had just happened is they had stopped logging because the logging machine, a thing called a feller buncher, that goes in, drives in, it grabs, it's, it's a tractor, it grabs a tree, it cuts the tree off at the bottom and then it walks it out. So it can drive around stuff. I said. I need to get a commitment from you for two things. I've heard that you're interested in selling this property after you do your logging. I will tell you that I'm interested in finding a buyer for you. And I'm already talking to state agencies who acquire land. But if you don't protect the stones, I can't get you a price because it's the stones that make the place valuable, or at least valuable for us, who will help you negotiate a good deal. So he said, call me when you got something. I said, keep those stones, stones safe. I went up there and looked. There was a chamber. The chamber is an odd chamber. It's got two pillars in it. What the heck is a chamber doing with two pillars in it? And I had just come from a site down in Lakeville, Massachusetts, where our astronomer was on his home territory, his colonial family had protected this area, and he's lived on it all his life, and he's been deciphering what's on his property. And he said he found a thing that he has deciphered is a tuning fork. And I said, a tuning fork? And it didn't fit any logic for me that Indians would have something like a tuning fork. He then described what it does. He said one arm of it indicates that it, there's going to be a 12-moon year.
The other arm indicates that there's going to be a 13 moon year. And they use that to make, the medicine people used to use that to make those determinations, whether they were coming into a 13 moon year or a 12 moon year, 13 months or 12 months. I said, oh. I walked into that chamber and I looked around. I said, then let's look at this. We were having a conversation. The back pillar is wider than the front pillar. So light coming through there at the equinox casts a shadow on, of the front pillar onto the back pillar. Somebody knows how to read that and say, and I, what came to me, and I, you know, I, offer, I, I, I operate on what creator and the ancestors send because I'm not very smart. They are, and I'm smart enough to listen and try to follow. But what they gave me was extrapolate from that thing that you just left to this thing that you're just meeting, and that applies to this. And there's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's more than one way to determine how many moons there are going to be in a year. And this may have been another way of deciphering that information. And our ancients had mastery enough of what they knew to be able to make those kinds of determinations and to measure this from that. So I'm, it's like, oh my God, they were smart. <laughs> my, how dumb we are. <laughs> At least I should be smart enough to follow the breadcrumbs that they give. So we're, <clears throat> we're looking, and I made it very clear. I met with a historic commission out there. I said, look, we don't, as a tribe, we don't want to own your land. We want to be able to influence what you do on your land. So as a his, if you can get the surrounding historic commissions for the three towns that overlap on this hill, and the three of you can participate in buying up this land, we will help get a relationship with you and either Massachusetts um, Fish and Game because I'd gotten the card at one of our presentations in Leminster from a woman who said, we can help you buy property. So I called her right away, had her card, called her. She says, whoa, that's out in Goshen? Ah, oh, that's not my district. So wait a minute, you're not for all of Massachusetts? No, we've got four different districts. That's so-and-so. I'll get you in touch with him. She calls him, gets him on the line. I talk to him. He and I the next day have a long conversation. He then gets back to me and he says, look, we got a problem. Fish and game only deals with endangered species of animals or plants. You're talking about cultural resources. The only one who can deal with that, DCR. I said, will you contact your counterpart at DCR and tell her what you found? He writes her a detailed email, introduces me, I then contact her and she says, we will look into that. So I'm looking at this as possibly our side door to get DCR to acquire a ceremonial stone landscape with three towns, with tribal relationship, and then that'll position them so they'll start looking at all of their land and all of the ceremonial stones that they now don't want to talk to us about. Because they don't want to change their policy. But if we open up the side door and get them in as a partner, that may work. Any questions? I'm like my brother in the back. I can talk to you all day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Oh. Awesome. Oh. So Thank you. My honor. If you have a town and you would like to have a memorandum of understanding with our tribes, Contact Kathy, she'll contact me. Or you can send your either photographs that you may have if you've got questions to tribal.mou at gmail.com. You can send pictures, you can send questions, and there, Eva Gibovic will call you back or she'll force me to do it. She's the caretaker of that site. So it's tribal.mou. MOU at gmail.com. If you've got a picture of something and you want to know more about it, send it to us, ask the question. And this is the way to get in touch with you as well? If it gets there, they'll force me to be in touch. Yes. 
Those ladies don't play. Kathy Taylor, she's one of the two caretakers, and um, they run um, a tour of the chamber and the site, the, the practice.